YouTube, it's Brian Phillips. You're never gonna guess what we have here. It's a giant box. And we're gonna find out what's in it. Here it goes, guys. We're super excited to bring this one to you. This is something that we hand-picked and we said we must do it now. And actually, I wanted to do it then, but I didn't. What is that? It's the BAE Hawk, amazing 80 millimeter EDF jet from FMS. Okay, we're just gonna pull this out. Whoa, contain yourself, Brian. Get it out. Oh, there it is. There it is. Uh-oh, woo, woo, it's just like slipping out. There it is. Whoa, don't fall, don't fall. Can you help? Kinda, obviously. Obviously. Oh man, that looks good. Oh, look at those, look at those trailing link oleos. They look a lot like this on the Futura. I bet they're amazing. Okay guys, this thing has an LED on the nose. That's how you know it's serious because that's what they do in their Royal Air Force evidently. I've been told from <laughs> FMS and looking at the box. Super excited for this plane. Those wheels look exactly like another plane and I'm trying to think of which plane it is. Hmm, is that know. exactly the same wheel that they have on the F4U Corsair? I don't know, maybe it is. Hmm. Either way, all right, so let's look at specs, okay? We have specs and only Chinese over here. <laughs> Turn. Let me see, where over are here. the specs? This side. Oh, so this does come equipped with the reflex, so we're gonna talk about that a little bit. Uh, it's got realistic retracts and flaps. It's made of EPO foam. I'm gonna flip this upside down, please forgive me. Ooh, nice gear door, sweet. Oh yeah, that looks good. Nav lights, can't wait to see it. Okay, wingspan is uh, 1,042. Whoa, it's small. Yeah, wow. That's, it's gotta be really similar to the size of the, uh, of the Futura. Uh, overall length, 1,226, so it's a lot longer than it is wide. And uh, flying weight, 2,500 grams. Motor size is obviously, it's a brushless, 3,280. Jeez, that's long. Uh, 2,100 kV, which is 2,100 rotations per volt. Um, 100 amp ESC, jeez! Servos, 13 gram analog metal, uh, metal servos. And there's eight of them. The radio is expected to be six channel, but we're gonna talk about that in a little bit because technically you need more than six if you wanna fully command and control the reflex. Now that being said, if you need six, you could technically do it without on off control, but anyway, we'll come back to that. Uh, EDF is obviously 80 millimeter, I've already mentioned that. It's 12 bladed fan. Recommended battery is 6S 4000 with at least 35C. We are gonna break that rule probably. Uh, maybe we'll do 5000. 30C? We'll see if a 5000 will go in there. Okay. We'll just ram 5000 right in there. Okay. All right, so we're gonna open this thing up. Cannot wait to do this unbox build radio setup. If you guys are new to Brian Phillips RC, buy this thing from the link and you'll help support us. And that's how we bring you these wonderful educational videos where we educate you about educational things. Yes. In case you're wondering. Only. You do help to fund the education when you buy from the links in the video description below. The education. Mm -hmm. We do education things on this channel. We always have. So if you're watching and you're wondering, do you educate people? The we answer do. would be absolutely we educate people. Just watch this three hour freaking video if that's not educational enough. I don't know what is. Hey, I am And we also educator. offer college credits. No, I'm just made that up. <laughs> Although, if you're a college and you wanna offer college credits for people watching our videos, please let me know. That would be kind of a cool class to write. That'd be an amazing class. If you guys didn't know this, my uh, wonderful syllabus. wife is a teacher by trade. And uh, she, well, also she is home with our children an now. She's an educator by trade. And she used to teach all sorts of interesting things like sex ed. I did. I'm you embarrassing You smile her. like that. I, I taught the class. She did. I said all the words. I drew pictures on a whiteboard. You did? <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> you teach it. Why did we talk about this before what? now? You started it. Uh, anyway, so here is, oh my oh. goodness. Look at that pair of retracts. I love red planes. Ooh, that's very gorgeous. Feel the bumps. That plastic reinforcement, this wing is like really got a lot going on. It does. Oh my goodness, feel it. Ugh. It's heavy. And look at the barn door flaps. It's bigger than the aileron, love it. Ooh, the aileron goes all the way to the wingtip. Oh. It is the wingtip. 
It is. Oh, that is amazing. Look how detailed and smooth this is. There's like even bird turds on it. <laughs> Do you see that scale? I bird know. turds. Let's get that out of there. Chinese no, dirt. I want the bird turd. I want it as scale as possible. <laughs> Don't you know me? Okay, so that is like oh. almost exactly the same size mm -hmm. as the BA Hawk. Um, excuse me, the, the, sorry, the Futura. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're wondering about the Futura, by the way, amazing, wonderful, glorious, beautiful. Watch our video. Well, obviously. we don't know what order they're gonna release. Oh crap. Because we aren't sure. I don't even know what that plane is over there. We it hasn't been sitting under that table for a month and a half. But we don't wanna show you things that you can't buy. That's one We're of the things we do on Brian Phillips RC, aside from education, is we wait until the planes are in stock and then we educate you yes. about how to buy them to support our channel in the links in the video description below. Freya. You got it right. What is this? What? Oh, <laughs> that is a fuel tank. So that's the fuel tank, I think, a drop, oh, no, drop tank. They would, they would drop that huge thing. Man, it would penetrate when it hit. Um, I'm gonna grab the tail. This is like really few pieces, guys. Look at this. Yeah, oh, I'm super excited. Yes, oh yeah. Look at this. It's got an e-drill on it. So cool. Hey, it passed quality control too. Oh, thank God. That's good. That's better than the one they threw away. So look, embedded. Wow. Embedded hinges. Congratulations, good job. Good job, FMS. That's crazy. They should, they should be doing that on all the planes. Did, did they do that on this one? Sorry. Did they do it on this one? Uh, no. You fired! That's just a pinch hinge. Are you sure it's just a... It's... <laughs> I don't care. It's, it's still an awesome plane. Actually, the truth is the thicker the uh, horizontal stabilizer and or vertical stabilizer will help to give a thicker pinch hinge. Usually the thicker ones are fine. We never really have problems until we crash and then they break. And I'm like, why would you break? I just crashed it in the ground <laughs> at like 70 miles. Wow, that is beautiful. Look at those chairs. That guy has a super stash going on. You know, on. when they designed this stash wearing guy right here, not me, this guy, mm -hmm. it was probably like less popular. Excuse me, actually it was popular the last time it was popular to have a mustache when they designed that. Oh, these are functional inlets, amazing. And then look, this is, do you remember the drawings you did? Does that, it's like a me? plus and circle and then there's like holes and. Oh, oh, those drawings. You could take away so much confusion because what we do on this channel, <gasps> oh, that's disgusting. What? Look right there. What? I need a skewer. Oh no. Show the people. Give them an extreme close up of that screw up. FMS, how dare you? Look. That's terrible. Okay, so anyway, we're gonna stick that back. I'm gonna show you how to fix it right now because I'm not messing around. Where's our skewers? Well, they're, they're down there somewhere. I might have to help you find them. There you go. Where are they? Well, Gosh, why do you hide the skewers? What if I needed a skewer? What happens if you die? I would not know where the skewers are. Mason jars, go over one. Where are they? I don't know. They're down there what somewhere. What the heck? Why do you hide these things from me? <laughs> I don't know. I'll have to pause and find them. I don't ask for much. <laughs> Just skewers. Are they over there? No. Oh. I don't see any skewers. Did you sell did, the skewers? Did you use them all? You probably used them all. No, I don't think I did. Oh, oh. did we just put them up there? No. <laughs> it, yes. it was right in the drawer where you left it. I found more of them. There's evidently a whole thing of them. They're in this Okay, part. so we're gonna fix this huge egregious screw up right now. Watch this. Now I really hope this works because we made a thing of it. I know, I oh, made a thing oh, of it. Oh crap. Oh no. It's not gonna work, I can't make the angle. Dang it. Look at this guys, this was my awesome idea. All right, all right, you see that decal? Oh, that's gorgeous inside. Love it, it's wonderful. Okay, all right, check this out. So you guys see that thing right there, the doohickey? Are you gonna poke a hole? I am gonna totally, I'm just gonna oh, stick it in if, there. What if you got like a wire, like a coat hanger? What if I just did this? <gasps> oh, it hurts my soul. Oh, yeah, I know. You think it hurts your soul? What are you talking about? Look. Yes, no, no. Yes, yes. Oh, right as rain. Yes, perfect. See, educational. 
Guys, what is not educational about this channel? Obviously, we showed you how to do now that. Now we can make dinner with some kebabs. Ooh, sounds good. Okay, so what other things did you teach in school? <laughs> um, child development. Yeah. A lot of culinary arts. Interior design. Finance, personal finance. This is bent. It is bent. Sewing. Why do you keep walking away from me? Are you? I had a kid swallow a sewing needle once. That was fun. Did you say somebody sewed their hand shut? No, I had a kid sew their finger. Oh. I had a kid swallow a needle once. That was like my worst classroom accident. Did they die? No. Oh. It goes worse. Where's the nut sack? Bolt sack. Oh no. Wait, like, tip over there. Oh, 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 oh. Here's a nut and bolt sack right okay. there. Was there more? There's a foam thing in that triangle. No, I already I already took okay, that out. Okay, that's empty. Okay, Whew, oh. that was close. That was scary, guys. There's like little. Uh, those are ventral fins. fins. Ventral fins. Why does it have a chart a USB C? Here? Because they send a USB C cable with every reflex because the reflex may or may not need to be software updated. Oh. Guys, listen. Antennas. Here on Brian Phillips RC, Nuts. we want the best for you. We want you to get the most bang for your buck in the RC experience that you embark in. And in order to do that, you have to be educated. And if you have already been educated for like, you know, seven or eight times as long as I've been doing this, then we'll still probably come up with some educational value for you. So we're gonna just pound it hard for a while about the education, just until for free. Okay, we've got some Ventral fins here. If you guys are confused, if you're lost about the education thing, don't worry, you'll eventually connect the dots. It's okay, look at that. Wow, amazing. Okay, so one of them is gonna go something like this, and one of them is gonna go something like that, or vice versa. Yeah, I think I had that right. So it should go something like that. Um, guys, just take that in. Look at the piece count, guys. My favorite We've piece got count. wing, Ventral fin, one, two, three, four. What the heck is this? <laughs> Five pieces. And then one nut and bolt sack and one C USB-C cable. And inside of the nut and bolt sack, legitimately there's hardly anything. Look at this, guys. Mm -hmm. um, oh, is that nose and, is that, is that a pedo tube on the front? I don't know, guys. Leave it in the comments below. Some of you guys that are from the Royal Air Force regions in, over there in Europe. That screws on? Thank you, finally. What is, it? is it metal? Um, it's got a screw in it, but I don't think it's metal. That's I think plastic. it's, listen. Oh, no. yeah, I don't think no. that's metal. Okay, so safety first, guys. Safety glasses, just oh. like I'm wearing. Wear the safety glasses. This thing could poke you in your eye out. If that hits you in the eyeball, you're gonna lose your, whoa, that's not going. Feel like it's cross-threaded. Why does it feel like it's cross-threaded? That's not good. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Whew, that scared me. Just screw harder. Yep, that's usually what I do if I run into resistance. So anyway, guys, getting back to the point, this plane looks totally sweet. I don't like the color match on the canopy to the, but I like the white and I love the way that mm -hmm. looks. And mm -hmm. I love the clearness and I love the strength and I love the release, but I'm still gonna add tape like a weirdo. Are you? Yeah, because I don't like fighting. I like one-handed uh, canopy release. Problem is when I put tape here, I always, I always try to, I try to reach and grab the tape and pull it off before I realize that I need to release it. This one's probably gonna have to stay that way. And by the way, if you guys didn't see earlier, I was a little excited and I, I repent, uh, but we are gonna be doing some education in this video. That's what the Unbox Build radio setup has always been about. Obviously we, um, enjoy flying for recreation. And then we also do educational efforts on YouTube. Um, if you guys have any questions about that, or if you're affiliated loosely with the federal government, then uh, just remember we're teaching people and uh, the future pilots of America come to Brian Phillips RC. This is like their prerequisite to get into the uh, flight oh, school. Good word. So don't be screwing that up for anybody, especially me. <laughs> Anyway, so if you guys are wondering, uh, what's the next step, Ryan? We've got our five pieces and one nut and bolt sack uh, opened up. What are you gonna do next? 
Well, the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to put this thing together, and it's going to be amazing. You're not even going to stop, are you? I'm not, well, hmm. I don't think I'm going to stop. I think I'm just going to grab it and stick it right in there. Okay. The plane in the stand. So this plane is going to be fun to build. It's going to be easy. And if you are new to the hobby or just returning, you are in the exact right spot where you can get an educational statement from us on how to build this plane. We're also going to show you what it's all about and talk a little bit about pulse width modulation. <laughs> so if you didn't know what pulse width modulation was, PWM stands for pulse width modulation. See, we've now educated you. I love when you say that. What is pulse width modulation? And if you answer anything about flux capacitors. Oh, dang it. That's all I knew. I'm not making you No, dinner. it has to do. Well, I wasn't anyway. Wait. The pulse width modulation is the way that we change the voltage that's going out to the respective servos so that they can respond into an according position. Okay. That's not what I was going to say. So now that we educated you, we can go back to building this and educating in that way. This is not like a beginner plane though, right? Is it necessarily? No, this would not be a beginner plane. Generally speaking, EDFs are a little harder to yep. fly. They take a little bit more space for final. If you, well, again, that has to do with your skill level and uh, the wind conditions, things like that. But uh, as with the previous 16 to 1700 videos that we've done on Brian Phillips RC, we're just going to continue educating. How did you pull that in? Hmm? How did you pull that in? Brown to brown, yellow to yellow. So everybody listen. On these cables, this is, uh, this is a Futaba color code. Uh, excuse me, uh, this would be, yeah, this would be Futaba slash JR color code. Uh, JR, of course, the predecessor to Spectrum. And uh, so if you see this color code, it's, it's kind of like that color code. They also have a white, red, and black, which would be like the, um, did, I, did I say Futaba? Futaba color code is mm -hmm. red, black, and white. Yes. This, this is Hextronics JR. Mm -hmm. So um, I apologize if I misspoke there, but. I don't think you did. Red, white, and black would be the Futaba color code, the standards. Now we have gone, these are actually considered to be micro servos and which I honestly, you know, since my, most of my experience with radio controlled airplanes, nine gram, 10 gram, or not 10 gram, nine gram, 13 gram, 14 gram, you know, like 21 gram, that's about as big as I've gone. But back in the day, that used to be a pretty small servo because if you were getting a, a SIG Eaglet, you know, you were using bigger servos because it was a gas powered plane. Um, you actually just had a bigger plane that required more power and more torque, um, which is a rotational measure of power, kinetic energy, okay? So st STEM, STEM, it's education people. It's all about the education. Education asquanges all negative energy ever, right? Is that what they say? Elevator. So anyway, getting back to the point. So these wires here are coming back to the reflex. The reflex is then gonna receive signal from the receiver, which we'll talk about more. But right now, because these wires are stuck out of here and we have to mount this wing, into the spot, we have to kind of get the wires out of the way. So our next move needs to be pull the tape off, which I'm sure you could see me as I was talking about some education thing. I need to pull those wires back, okay? And by the way, if you're new to the hobby or returning to the hobby, there is a lot to learn. And serious, mm -hmm. all joking aside, there is, and we aren't really joking when we say we're educational, it's just we're trying to point it out, very obviously, laid on real thick for the you know, hard-headed federal agents out there. Um, we are educating you even if you don't like it and you don't realize it mm -hmm. because that's what we do here on Brian Phillips RC is we try to teach you guys uh, the little bit that we have gathered and collected over the years, the things we've read, all seven of them, and then the rest of the stuff that we've done through hard learned failure. Where the heck were those two leads coming from? Okay, so here's two wires and I believe this is the elevator. I think this is a Y cable folks. Yep, it's a Y cable, because I only have one lead. See, I've only got one lead in my fingers over here, and then I have two leads over here, so oh, that's yeah. a Y splitter. So use caution when pulling. Don't pull too hard. If it's a Y splitter and it doesn't have a retention clip, like those have retention clips that will keep this from getting yanked undone, 
If that Y is a short Y and then it goes on to a straight extension cord, a servo extension cord or servo signal extension cord, then you may actually unplug it. So you need to be careful about that. Now, keep in mind, anytime you unplug, now this servo really needs to be walked out of the way. So I'm just gonna push on the linkage and it's like really, oh, I did not like that. That's hard on your servos. Don't do it unless you have to. I see a lot of guys yanking on their servos in the field when they think nobody's looking. Don't do that. And it's, don't do that, don't do that. First of all, somebody might be looking. And then second, second of all, if you do that, you may break it off. You'll wear it out prematurely. Or you might go blind. Wrong size! Okay, so these are all two millimeters. Two millimeters. Who marks this? You. Dang it. So there's two long screws. How do I know that they're long screws needed? Process Education. of elimination. Stem. <laughs> I'm using the scientific method. You have to learn what STEM stands for. Science, technology, engineering, mathematics. Okay, good. I know, I know what it stood for. Seriously. I'm the Brian Phillips behind Brian Phillips RC. <laughs> All of the screws, I feel like it's going in. Jeez, oh, come on. What is wrong with you, screw? Just go to your home. Are you too good for your home? I don't think you're pushed down. You're not You know what? Way. If there's nothing in there to bite. You're not seated all the way. No, no, there's like literally nothing in there. I feel like maybe it's actually the wrong screw. Oh. Is there, there was only two styles. No, there's only one. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's very strange. Oh. Watch this, camera crew. Okay. Watch this. No, I'm serious, like I, I'm lined up. So this is one of the major frustrations when building planes that you may run into, and that is you stick it in the hole and it doesn't bite. It's not like you've done anything wrong. You went into the hole exactly as you should but you just don't get the job done. Why are you looking at me like that? I'm not looking at you like that. talking anything. about this. Come over here and show them. I'm perfectly fine. If you look through, if you look through the exhaust tube, yep. there's a hole. Put your finger in there and feel that. Mm-hmm. Now watch this. If this starts now, I'm gonna feel like an idiot. Oh, I hope so. Does it feel like it's coming out the bottom? I don't feel anything yet. Seriously? Seriously. Okay, all right, I'm gonna show them the trick. Trick of the day. I'm gonna press harder, and it still doesn't, I, I can't say with certainty that it's going, because this is, or oh, wait, is it, did it start? It's really, it's kind of hard to tell on this. Sometimes you press and it feels like you're biting. See, look, now oh, it's, it's going. more collapsed. It's going. You weren't, I didn't weren't stick it in. All the way. I didn't stick it in hard enough. That was right. You gotta push really hard, guys. Sometimes you're like, Surely that's hard enough, and sometimes it's not. It's not, and that was a perfect example. I mean, I was sticking it in there as hard as I thought, so I had to grab behind and support, and then once it bites, it's good. But okay, so now I've moved this rudder, so now I have to move it back. Listen, guys, listen. I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna put the mic right here so you can hear it. Oh God, it sounds terrible. Oh God, don't do it. Oh, it sounds terrible. Ugh. The reason that sounds terrible is because these things are not designed to run from outside in, they're designed to run from inside out. Because there's a bunch of gears, and they are metal gears, so they are unlikely to strip, but you can't break them. And just keep in mind, if you have, you know, output in the couple of kilograms, you know, that, that's a lot for a small servo, because two kilograms would be like, you know, four and a half, five pounds. But the, which is one pound is equivalent to 2.2 .2 kilos. Or a pineapple, according to our daughter's math book. Oh, okay. <laughs> a pineapple, aren't they all like all different sizes? That's kind of what I said. Uh, okay. Well, they must be writing the rule book for the FAA. <laughs> Just gonna flip this over. FAA stands for Federal Aviation Administration. I think they're fine every this is an educational program, I'll remind you, just like it always has You have to been. start making PowerPoint slides. What is this? <laughs> it's for later. Just put that away. Okay, guys, there is a Predator 100 amp ESC. Amazing. Wait, right there. Then we're gonna be going right in here with all this mess of crap. Ooh, I need to cut the zip tie, guys. 
Look at that. There's a singular zip tie and I've got to cut it. Now, some people might call these things something I can't say because it's spelled D I D I R I. That's why. K E S. Yeah. We're just going to call them side cutters. So, anyway, we don't say anything that shouldn't be said on this channel because we're just an educational channel and we educate. And also, if you wanna buy this plane from the link in the video description below, you will keep the education flowing for everybody involved. Not the least of which would be our children that we also educate. <laughs> we do. About airplanes and other things. All right, so now we have to stick that bundle of wires right into the hole. I love this air intake, you see that? That is so cool. I love it, very cool. Just like a real one would be, except much smaller. Remember guys, after all, at the end of the day, these are real planes. They're just small. Don't forget it. So with all joking aside, when you fly these things, you know, they're going fast and you could hurt somebody. So please be respectful and careful. After all, this is just educational, so. You may not take any joy from it. It's only for education. We all know that education is boring and no fun, right? Isn't that what they taught you in like years three through four of college? Three through four. Or was that uh, the, the extra 18 bachelor's graduated plus early. graduate credits? Thank you very much. Ah, <sighs> man, I just don't know. I'm not smart enough to do some of these things that the federal government wants me to do. That's okay. What do they say about teachers, camera crew? I can't say it because I'm not one. <laughs> Those who can't do, teach. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Those who can't teach, teach PE. <laughs> you shouldn't have said the sad oh, sorry. part. I'm a teacher. Jeez, don't you have PE friends? Yeah, some of my best friends is a PE teacher. That's right. Hopefully she's not watching this one. I'm pretty sure she's not going to sure be not. watching this. Oh, goodness gracious. Have we not offended? What group have we not offended yet? Oh, we have lots of people to offend. We've got so. a long ways to go. <laughs> So anyway, obviously, since this is an educational video, just like all of our videos on this channel and our entire approach to life is really about education. Now, at the end of the day, Freya, once that happens and we're golden. Hmm, look at that line. That's really sinking down in there. Mm -hmm. You guys see that? Okay, so ordinarily when I'm doing Assembly of a wing on an airplane, and this is something you guys can consider to uh, adopting. There is a crushing effect that happens on the foam. So the plastic bears the load and it spreads out the load of this small head on a screw and then it can hold a much larger surface. I mean, this whole wing is held on by four screws and you're like, oh my goodness, that's going a hundred miles an hour, six inches from my face, four screws. Exactly. You shouldn't be six inches from your face. Unless you're really exciting like me. But ventral fins. Ventral meaning they're on the ventral portion of the fuselage. Should we make them watch a video the next time we do one instead of like actually teaching? Did you do that as a teacher? What, make them watch videos? You're like, hey, um, well, no, because you're not the sub. <laughs> Well, do that. Those ventral fins are cute. They're so small and small. wonderful. I'm excited for that light. That I know. I want to see what that light looks like. It looks like it's kind of in a unique spot to me. Kind of an odd shape cover. Yep. Though, <laughs> just saying. Okay, how does this mount? There's slots oh. right here. I actually think it's cool. Oh, it blocks my inlet though. What oh. the heck? I don't want to block my inlet. It blocks the cheater hole, the big, long, round thing. Hmm. Oh, there's also two antennas. Yes, antennas, not antennae. It's not, it's an not a creature. It's an airplane. Hmm. I assume that's correct because this one uh, goes on the top. And I think we're going to probably glue these because this one's going to be one that's, yeah, it's going to be a Primero experience. Look at those landing gear door. Wish they were flat. Yeah. They've already got kind of a scuff on them. 
That's okay. Don't worry. After I fly, they'll have more scuffs, I promise. Yeah. Okay, so listen, guys. Foam to foam is, is a misnomer, okay? This will also connect plastic to foam mm -hmm. and wood to foam and other things to foam, but also foam to foam it does too. So a little more education to drop today. In case you guys are wondering why we're educating you more than usual, we're not. This is the exact amount of education that we have always provided on this channel. And I'm gonna pull that right out of the hole and just see all the sticky stuff on it. Watch this. I reject you. Yep. Mm, that's kind of rude. I know, it is totally rude. Look, I got some sticky stuff on there now. Watch this. Uh, better not, it might open the hole up. I might need to figure Nobody out wants a loose goes. hole. Ah. Oh, this looks so sweet. I totally want to take and paint this. Oh, and then get an F-14 from the company that shall remain unnamed. And then I can go up and do my training for what would rhyme with ROP run. Just like the cinematic experience that we've all seen hundreds of times. But now that we're just strictly educational, like we were before, exactly the same, uh, we, do, we don't have any copyright violations. <laughs> Um, okay, let's see what happens when I wipe this hole off. I'm going to clean it up. See, I've got a little bit of, a little bit of sticky stuff there on either side of the hole. I'm just going to wipe that up. And what's going to happen is we want to just let that, that glue set up. And it doesn't look like much because it really is honestly not much. Okay. It's very, bar barely any. Okay. Now, why do we care about pulling it back out of the hole? Careful. Because it's a it, contact adhesive. Yep. You want it to set up a little bit and then it'll Watch be, this. It's like it's an envelope. Watch this. Okay. I can almost pick the plane up. Halfway in the hole. Just watch this. This is how strong this crap is. Watch this. I bet I can pick it up. Halfway. So. That's why you pull it out of the hole and then stick it back in. Because every other time you do it, what's gonna happen is the contact adhesive is going to push the thing back out and it will annoy you. And you'll be like, Brian, you told me to stick it in and we had nothing but problems. I you, told you to pull out. If you, that's only effective. We don't need any more stats, teacher. If you transport your planes, though... They'll be the first thing to break. Antennas are the first thing to break. And break. there is so. a trick you can do. And the trick you can do, like on the top one especially, grab yourself some tape like this. Just regular Scotch brand tape. I prefer clear. Get ultra gloss clear, crystal clear, whatever they're calling it this week. By the way, we have one additional screw and a USB-C. I'm going to put the screw over here. We actually have bags of bags with spare bags in the bags from those bags. Mm -hmm. And then the bolts in that a came box. in the bag. It's labeled bags. for bags. We keep everything because I live here. Yeah. That plane looks amazing. That's that was cool. like the easiest build ever. It was here. Hold on, I gotta get down so I can show them. It looks really good. I love the size. I love mm -hmm. the look. I love the pilot. He is beautiful. And by the way, <laughs> <laughs> Look at the instrument. The instrument, not that instrument, the instrument cluster. Look, the one that we rammed. Is it still staying? Yeah, obviously. So FMS, we forgive you. I love the way this plane looks. It looks amazing. And by the way, that's called a strake, I believe. A strake. There would be strakes on here too. And they create a vor a vortice, a vortice. Did we did we pause? We've j we kept going, right? We didn't stop to start the unbox. It's what? Like our fastest. It's the fastest unbox ever. Build. Well, listen ever. now. Now that we're just emphasizing the critical terminology and education components, we just want to make sure we're all about education here. So the next step is going to be radio setup. And also, these are called bamboo skewers. These are used for delicious, what type of food? Kebabs. Kebabs. So they also work really good alongside toothpicks. And yes, if 
future pilots of the world, the ones that don't need to be turned away to go work retail jobs at JCPenney that's now out of business. No, that's Sears. Sears. This is, this is a toothpick. It is your best friend when you're working with foamies. This is its big brother or sister, if you wish, or whatever, non-binary, whatever it is. Look, different sizes and shapes. We use these all the time to fix our planes. I'm serious, and they are amazing. And what you do is you use those to pin and make some mechanical strength that's immediate. Um, working with foam is challenging when you're first new, especially if you're new to foamies, and you're like, I'm not flying no foamy. That stuff's garbage. Well, I've got hundreds of these garbage pieces in my basement, and they're not garbage. They're awesome. Uh, that being said, you can still build balsa wood planes and they're still amazing and there's definitely value in that and there's definitely an art to building. But most people don't have the time to build them. So if you would like your technology to be legal in the near future, I would recommend that you get over that disparity between the foamy world and the balsa world and or the fiberglass world or the fiber, whatever, uh, carbon fiber custom built really expensive planes. We all need to work together right now to absorb these awesome educational videos for the sake of Freya. Okay, so here it is, beautiful. All right, so the next step we have to do is we have to get into radio setup. Now radio setup is where we have historically been probably a little bit more educational than the other people in the crowd of uh, YouTube RC influencers. We love this stuff as in I do and my wife tolerates it because she's married to me. But at the end of the day, I love this stuff enough for the two of us. That's true. So if you want to come and look inside of this hole, we have a Reflex V2. You can see here, I love this. It's kind of nice. I can point. <laughs> Reflex V2. And it says, aileron, elevator, throttle, uh, rudder, plus or minus plus S. USB, UART, okay. Uh, uninterruptible. I forget what UART stands for. I would explain it. Sorry, guys. LED. Yep, there's an LED. And then S-Bus uh, -bus mode. So it's S-Bus PPM or mode. Okay. Pulse per minute. Serial bus. Bus stands for... Oh, crap. I can't think of what it stands for. But it's, it's something about... Generally, a bus is where everything is consolidated on a hardware system. So, but I can't remember what bus stands for. I'm sorry. I'll think of it at some point. So then channel one, channel two, channel three, channel four is the input, I guess. But either way, they're labeled. And then they go out to these things, which are just little jumper cables. And you'll note that they have throttle. And they have rudder. Of course, throttle also provides power from the S back or U back or back, BEC, which would stand for battery elimination, a battery eliminator circuit, switching battery eliminator circuit for S back or U uh, back, which is, uh, I believe it's, un is it uninterruptible? Yeah, something like that, um, battery elimination circuit. So it's just three different styles. In our case, on the electronic speed control, that is going to provide the power to run the servos, the lights, the receiver, and the stabilizer slash flight controller, which is what the Reflex V2 is. And so that's all happening outside of the receiver, which brings us to the next part in training today, which is, what are we using for transmitter and receiver? Well, we're gonna use the NX8 because I'm obviously a Horizon Hobby fanboy. And I do love this. It's been very good. We've had great luck with it. And yes, I have had many other transmitters within that realm. We have another NX6 here. I have a DX18, we have a DX9, we have a DX8, we have a DX6i, DX5, DX4E. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. I think that's all the big ones. Then we had a bunch of DXSs and a bunch of DXEs with mm -hmm. ready to fly. So we've had a lot of different transmitters from these guys. We have transmitters from other platforms as well. But in this case, we're gonna talk about the receiver. The receiver, of course, is receiving the data from the transmitter. There's a trans, it's a radio system. It's actually directional, it's, it's full duplex. So you have transmission and reception, okay, on both ends. 
And that's why transmitter and receiver is really a misnomer because you actually have a transmitter and receiver and a transmitter and receiver, but commonly known as transmitter because that's where the pilot is and the receiver where the plane is. Okay, now that we've confused some of you old timers, we understand that you're used to crystals, but crystals just set the rate of oscillation on the radio frequency. We don't do that anymore. We're always in 2.4 gigahertz, and at some point we're gonna go up to six gigahertz, I believe, for our stuff. But right now we're in the 2.4 gigahertz frequency range, which is then automatically assigned, and it's also given a frequency hopping range as part of DSM-X. That's the protocol that is a software-driven solution that tells this how to talk with this, not addressing, but tells them how we're sending packets of data and how we're receiving, and then how I'm sending and how I'm receiving. Okay, so educational. If you don't think it's educational, you need to get out of my class and go okay. see the principal. Don't tell them anything we said though, especially not about the holes. Anyway, so the NX8, the transmitter is gonna be turned on Okay, now this is gonna come on and it may say something like fatty F14. That would be totally inappropriate in an educational environment. We don't make fun of, oh, never mind. I take it back, we do. Okay, so cancel and back. Then you bring up add new model. It's an acro we're gonna create, okay? Now, we're not gonna go into all the details here, but I just want you guys to see the way this works, if you're brand new to the hobby and you're starting with this plane, get ready to be done with the hobby because you're not gonna make it out of this plane unless you're in the extreme, 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 extreme minority. This plane is a terrible place to start. You will fail and you will say, Brian, your education sucked. That's right, and plus you had to leave to go to the principal's office three quarters of the way through the class, not my fault. Something like this would be way better and it's also beautiful. Yes, you don't even have to start here. There's a million other things you could do. These planes you see in this living room are just literally, quite literally, the tip of the iceberg, mm -hmm. okay? Now, that being said, I mean, you could start with something as simple as one of these little planes, right? Because, you know, here on Brian Phillips RC, we're educational. We're not trying to sell you an FMS plane. We don't care what you buy. <coughs> Hopefully FMS is not watching this part. <coughs> but that's true, we're here to teach you about the hobby. Uh, okay, so getting back to the point. Now, normally we would use an AS3X and SAFE equipped receiver. SAFE, of course, stands for Sensor Aided Flight Envelope. Sensor Aided Flight Envelope. S-A-E-F. SAFE. S-F-A-E. Try again. S-A-F-E. SAFE. Yes, there you go. Or some people like to say, uh, auto leveling because that's what it does. When you let go of the sticks in a normal flight on an aircraft, you let go, you think as an uneducated pilot, you're like, oh yeah, I let go of the sticks. Oh wow, look how good that is. That's perfect. It does this, boom. Or better yet, where's the tree? Ah, oh, tree, look, oh, I'm not going anywhere near it. Boom, right into the tree. That's what really happens. And if you're going like 14 miles off course from the tree, it'll be like, oh, I'm gonna go right for the tree. By the way, that's a pretty tough plane. This would be a good one to start with. Would be. Just saying. <sighs> now that you got me all excited, people. So normally when you let go of the sticks, that's what happens. But with SAFE, sensor aided flight envelope, which rides on top of another feature called AS3X, artificial stabilization, Three axis, yes. AS3X, okay? So AS3X is stabilization. Stabilization is what that does. It also does auto leveling. That's what a reflex does. So when you're looking at receivers, you might be looking at an 8360T, which has full range telemetry, not just flyby, like the AR631. This one has one antenna, it has less range. And therefore it's called flyby, and, uh, flyby telemetry, which means that telemetry data being broadcast will not be received because it's too weak. Now it's received, now it's not out in the circuit. Now it's received, now it's not. Some of the incidental information will be lost when you're out a long ways away. With this or with this, it's not. 
This one is the AR8360T, and this one is the AR8020T. Why is there a difference? They look identical. They look identical. Are they identical, camera crew? Nope, they are not. They're not, okay. This is why they're not ident identical, because we have the reflex. You don't need AS3X and safe, and you'd be foolish to spend the premium to get this over this. I mean, these guys are gonna be bad at you that you bought the right thing instead of the wrong thing. If you wanna tear that reflex out, we will help you how to set it up, and you can buy this, but you don't need this. If you're not using reflex, you can go back down to this, because guess what? This has six plug-in channels and a couple channels above that you can use in tandem with the NX8, 10, or whatever. The NX6, however, is only gonna give you seven channels, the seventh of which is a partial channel, okay? So you'd be able to do this plane, turn on safe, turn on AS3X, all that stuff. You'd be able to do that with the NX6, believe it or not, but not with Crow or anything like that. And we'll show you how you can do it. Ailerons, flaps, elevator, rudder, throttle, safe select, gear. Yes, you can do that, that's seven, okay? So you could get away with a much cheaper, just to give you an idea. Difference in price here is probably what, like 50 bucks. Mm -hmm. It's a big difference, okay? So that's what we do at Brian Phillips RC. We help your RC dollars go further. How can you help repay the benefits that you get from this channel? Obviously you can get educated and use the education by following the links to buy this plane for your very own. And we'll get small commissions from that. But remember, we're doing this for education. Sometimes we just get a bone thrown to us once in a while. It's like bringing an apple and putting it on your teacher's desk. Okay, this is what we're gonna be using. Why do we want an AR8020T? Brian, this only has uh, six channels. You have throttle, elevator, rudder, ailerons, flaps, and retracts in no particular order. That's only six channels. You need a six channel, you need an AR620. No, wrong again, that's why you're here at the education. We need a six channel because then you wouldn't be able to turn on and off auto leveling. So for the simple fact that we show how the auto leveling works, we wanna be able to turn it on and off for you guys at home watching and learning. Also, the additional channel that's pluggable will give us the capability to split out the ailerons if we wanted to, which we're not going to do. Don't look at me that way, camera crew. <laughs> so we actually have one spare channel when we use this configuration, but you would be short one channel if you did the AR620. Now, that being said, this also has telemetry and it's full range telemetry, which is very nice. So we will have pack voltage with or without a smart pack. This is obviously not a smart plug. This is an EC5. Okay, these are IC, these are IC, oh, that's 30s. Hold on, where's the 50s? There's 50, there's 50, there's 4,050. Okay, by the way, we're gonna talk about chargers for a minute. Turn that on, let it come up to speed. This is a Gen 2, you plug in the battery, that's a 50C, 4,000. Another 50C, 4,000, I'm gonna plug that one in. See, this one's a Gen 1, so it's actually got this, which is a balance lead and the discharge lead. That's an E, this is an IC5, not an EC5. What's the difference? If you didn't already know, this one doesn't have the smart pin in the middle. What's the difference beyond that? Nothing. This stands for E-Flight Connector 5. Okay? What does 5 mean? 5 means bigger than 3. And I don't know what else. Okay. So that's why we like smart batteries is because we have lots of telemetry data that can come through as well as auto discharge. That's really the only reason that I care for them beyond the fact that they also auto balance when you're flying. Some would say they actually prefer to have the balance lead. If you do, just buy a Gen 1. That means you can use a voltage alarm. A voltage alarm, of course, educational. Educational for you, for you. right there. That's a voltage alarm. Oh, but I got a voltage alarm. I don't need telemetry. Yeah, right. Telemetry is way better. You can, you can hear this when you're 300 feet away, okay? You can't hear a voltage alarm when you're 300 feet away. And when you're screaming along at 70 or 80 or 90 or 100 miles an hour, you're not gonna hear it either because EDF scream about the same frequency. And if you're deaf, then you're not gonna hear. And if you're a normal guy that's my age, you're getting more and more deaf every day. Anyway, okay, getting back to the point. So we're gonna use the eight channel because that gives us full feature of all the things that we would be able to do. Now, also, if you have an NX10 paired up with this, I have an NX8, you would have access to higher channels. 
But since this isn't safe and AS3X equipped, whereas this one is, then you would actually garner access to two additional unused channels in this configuration. Um, also, you could go with an AR637T, which would look like this, except it's skinnier and you've got uh, two less plugs. That would be perfect for this plane if you're tearing out the reflex. Also, make no mistake, the reflex can be programmed to use in a different plane. Okay, if that wasn't educational, I don't know what else to talk about. So we're gonna keep educating you guys here on Brian Phillips RC. <coughs> Free up. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just wait longer, it'll come up, okay? I promise. All right, so we have all these plugs and then we also have this one here, which is probably for our LEDs. Yeah, I think that's for our LEDs. Okay, and then we have this, which is gear. Okay, so that's like, I assume all the gear. Gear does not need to go into the reflex, so it's just down here dangling, which I do not like. Um, there's also one up here that says gear. I think what that means is this goes into that. Oh man, look at that. There's a bunch of plugs coming up here. Oh yeah, we have to land those. Those came from the wing. Mm -hmm. We never did actually land those. Yeah, we didn't pull Guys, them. I apologize. I forgot. I forgot to mention that. So we actually do need to get some forceps out for this step. And that's going to be where we land the main landing gears retracts. And we're going to land the ailerons and the flaps. Okay. So if you ever decide to do crow, and that'd be where these would act as ailerons and um, spoilerons generally, or just a full length flap around, which would be weird in this application, I would not do it. Then you would need to assign these separately, which means you need to take the Y cable out and replace it with direct cabling for each side, okay? Because you, you have to have a separate channel assigned for each of them. And you're like, well, why do you have to do that? Well, because you have to command them to do the same thing at the same time, which means you can't give one signal. No, they don't know any better, okay? All right, so these plugs are gonna suck to plug in, by the way, look at this. Where, where are they? They're right here. So this is, <clears throat> this is flaps. So then you just have to come over here to wherever the flap extension is. Okay, so we have gear there. We have gear there, there's gear, and here's gear. So this is gear, and I have brown going upward. So I'm gonna plug this in right here. So that's gear. That does not seem right. I feel like there should be a Y cable somewhere. So I may be mistaken on this, and if I am, I apologize, not trying to mislead here. Even teachers and educational platforms make mistakes. Never. Hmm? Never? Oh. Camera crew is in disagreement about that. <clears throat> okay, so flaps. Strictly educational platforms. Just happen to encourage you to buy things once in a while from time to time. Occasionally there is some wealth transfer. Okay, so we have, this is ailerons. So that's uh, coming up here and it looks like it is, where is the aileron wire? Do you see it? Boy, it's hard to see these wires, folks. Mm. That's flaps. Flaps does not have to go into the reflex, okay? How the heck am I gonna reach the gear and flaps? Look at this, that doesn't make sense at all. Look, see what I'm talking about? How the heck is that gonna work? See, that's gotta reach down all the way to wherever the receiver ends up. This is gear. I think this gear might need to actually be attached to that gear. But are I'm- they assuming <clears throat> you're gonna put your receiver all the way back there by the reflex? And that's why those are so short? Flaps aileron or did we pinch them no we didn't because it's coming out of a breakout box right they're not very long <sighs> yeah that could be a bit of a problem all right so we got to do radio setup before we can figure out where everything plugs in so this one's gonna be a little bit more tricky than i thought but that's okay we've worked through it before and we'll work through it again this time if you want to set up your plane with just as3x and safe um we can show you how to do that in another video because we've done other planes with AS3X and SAFE. Uh, in fact, didn't we do, the no, the Future also had ref, uh, mm -hmm. reflex, had reflex V2. We've done a few other planes, so just ask us, we'll, we'll set you up with one. I think we did the original V2, that's the V3 Futura. Mm -hmm. We did that with AS3X and SAFE. I believe so. Okay. Um, also, if you don't know what this is, this is a telemetry wire, and that's gonna plug into our 
main discharge lead, which is right here, and that's gonna carry back to where it plugs into the receiver. Now, I don't know how things are gonna lay out, so I don't wanna get that wired in yet, but this little micro pH connector here is gonna go right here. Okay, see this? Educational. All right, so anyway, continuing onward, por favor. So, the next move we have to do is we have to kind of do our radio setup. I'm gonna just throw this out of the way for now. Radio setup is one of those things that we do pretty much every time on the channel. Um, and you may not actually watch the radio setup because you already know how to do it maybe. Uh, but if you don't and you need help, we're here for you. And this is a big part of what we do on Brian Phillips RC is we take you from start to finish on an airplane. And we've tried for years to come up with a way of making the pace of the videos fast enough for a more advanced pilot, but not so fast that people can't keep up that are brand new. We have failed in some regard on both ends of the spectrum because it's kind of impossible. So we're doing our best. If we're going too fast, there's a, there's a gear icon. If you click down below in the settings of your video player, you can actually slow the video down and we won't lose audio. So you'll still hear what we're saying, but it'll just sound like I'm really slow. Or it'll sound like a chick. Either way, I don't care which way you do it. We just wanna be here for you to help you get through this tough spot for you if you aren't aware of how to do it already. Okay, so getting along with the radio setup, this should be a pretty straightforward thing. Earlier, and I'll just kind of revisit this step. We clicked add new model, and then we created a new acro. So I'm gonna go back into system setup. And this is where we would come out normally. And we would go model select. That's where we just came from. Then model type, if you reset this, it clears everything. So I'll just hit back to cancel out of that. This is model name, 118 colon, and then the thing. So we're gonna type in the name. We're using a legacy keyboard, full disclosure. All right, so BAE Hawk, 80 millimeters. We always show the size of the EDF and they size these planes by EDF size, which is kind of weird that the fan size would dictate the size class of an EDF plane, but it's just the way that the model companies do it. So that's the way we do it, okay? Now aircraft type, this is where you set up your wing type. So you would go to wing and you would set it up as one flap and one aileron, okay? And then the tail is standard, so we can go next. Then we just change this picture to look something like what we want it to look like. Probably the Habu is the closest. Looks like that one's about to crash. Let's do that one. Okay, now F mode setup. We're not gonna set up flight modes because we don't have to. However, if you run a lot of auto leveling, you may wanna set up a flight mode and then assign the flight mode to make decisions or, or not to make decisions, but to have specific switch assignments, whether it's D or C or B. And what's gonna happen is when you make those switch changes, you can make different trim packages for each of those settings. So like in the auto leveling, you could have one trim response. And in AS3X, or in this case, stabilization, you could have another trim response. And in no stabilization, you could have another trim response, which is really nice. But I'm not doing it because it's not necessary and I haven't found it to be that helpful, except on one plane, which was an op hobbies uh, what is that plane? The Challenger? The Challenger. Yeah, the Om Challenger, I did do that because it was full length wing flap rounds. Okay, so anyway, continuing onward. So spoken flight mode, you can also set that up, which is nice. Now, one thing that's also nice about flight modes is that it shows on the main screen, you can see the word spelled out. I'm gonna make an audio event for the switch condition change, okay? So let's talk about times, okay. Um, all right, so <clears throat> they're expecting flight time. They don't say. Okay, so 4,000. Uh, I don't see anything about time on here. Even if I did, it wouldn't matter. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just work our way down the list. I was hoping I could set my timer right away, but we'll come back to that. So servo setup. We don't know the direction of travel yet. Dual rates and expo. We're going to set this right now. I'm going to set it to switch F. A lot of this stuff is subjective, so please make adjustments to your taste. But if you don't have a taste, don't tell me that you don't like my setup until you've tried it. And when you do, you'll love it. It's delicious. Aetherons, that's where we start. That's where we go if we don't have enough expo. It's too touchy. 
that's where we go if it's not touchy enough, okay? And then we just do that on all three of the control channels and it makes it really nice because we have an out. In aviation, you're always working on margins and safety margins and outs. You always wanna have enough, enough of an escape path to land the plane and save your life or save the plane if you can, you know? Same is true in RC, except it's usually not a life or death thing. I mean, it could be if you were really, really, really dumb and you made, got yourself into a really terrible spot. Like you're flying a P-38 and you're running into your own head. It's about a two meter plane. That's unfortunate. Okay, so there's the middle. That's low expo, meaning very touchy or more touchy. That's where you're gonna start. And that's where you would go if it's too touchy. Then when you land, you'll set that control channel whether it be rudder, elevator, or aileron, or all three, or a combination they're in, you would set that one to the high rate, and then you would double it again. So it would start out at something like 90, and then this would be 20. Then you would make this setting maybe 40, and then you'd make this like, I don't know, 75. And you would say, okay, now I'm gonna take off. That's where I'm gonna start on that channel. And then that one I would usually recommend going half of what the, the other one is. Yes, you can do negative expo. And by the way, in spectrum world, negative expo means you're actually tightening up the center of the sticks. So it's really good if you're doing 3D flying. Now, I'm gonna go back to my standard and just show you how to do that. So hopefully that didn't confuse you guys too much. If you're new pilots, again, this is not a good plane for you, but you can still learn a lot by watching me go through this process. Yes, you can download bind and fly profiles. When you're doing bind and fly planes, this is a plug and play. So you have to do a little bit of setup yourself. That's yet another reason why this would maybe not be the best choice. Okay, throttle cut. One of the most important features should be on by default, switch H. When I move the stick, you see in the monitor down here, you can't see the throttle. It's at minus 100 no matter what the stick condition is doing. Okay, I want to put that back in the middle. Okay, see this? Did it move? That's still on switch H. So now watch, when I shut off the throttle cut, it goes up to live throttle. Okay. It's also in the spectrum world, plus 100 is up. <clears throat> zero is the center and then minus 100 is down. Okay, I probably need to calibrate my sticks, but either way. Throttle curve, we don't mess with in airplanes generally. Uh, that'd be more of like uh, for a helicopter. And uh, digital switch setup, we're not gonna do that here. We're gonna do the audio vent later. Flap system, we'll set that to switch B. Okay, so we'll set to switch B. We don't know which direction we want this stuff to go, so I'm just gonna go ahead and set this like One's gonna be minus 100, the other one's gonna be plus 100, then we'll fiddle with it once we get it moving and we can kind of see what's happening. <clears throat> and then we'll do elevator correction. Problem is I, yeah, that's okay. I just wanna make sure my flaps are off when we start so that we don't accidentally do a mechanical mm -hmm. adjustment to mm -hmm. offset this. And we'll talk about that a little later, okay? Speed is gonna be two seconds. And then basically the timer, let's set it for, let's go like three and a half minutes to be on the safe side with a one out, anything over 25% activates. The timer starts to count down and then continues counting until one minute, it's gonna give us a vocal warning. It's gonna say one minute remaining. And then 10 seconds, we're gonna do a voice countdown and expiration, we're gonna do a tone and vibrate and then tone every minute thereafter. All right, cool. All right, so then we'll walk out of the menu. As you can see, when you move the stick over 25%, it starts counting down. I'm gonna press cancel and it clears it. Throttle cuts on. Landing gear, I have no idea what direction they are. They're probably wrong. They always seem to be wrong. I want the switches to always be in the same condition so that I don't have problems. Okay, so the volume's 50 evidently. All right, so the next step is now I can take and scooch over one menu by scrolling and I can see what each of the channels calls out. Okay, so throttle, aileron, elevator, rudder, gear, flap, and then something, something, okay? Also auxiliary two is tied to switch B. So I'm just gonna jump in here to system setup. I'm gonna disconnect RF, and I'm gonna go into channel assign. And I'm gonna change auxiliary two <coughs> to switch D, okay? Why switch D? Switch D is going to be our stabilizer on, stabilizer off, auto leveling on and so on and so forth. Then I'm gonna have landing gear on switch A, this one. And then I'm gonna have flaps on switch B, this one. And so I don't want the automatic assignment for flaps to also then drive our setting 
for the stabilizer. So now we can walk out. Now look at monitor, watch this. Now this moves, but it doesn't move attached to the flaps. Okay. And you can see that slow deployment takes two seconds, whereas this is fast acting. It's an immediate change, okay. or at least electrically immediate. All right, so next thing we gotta do now is we gotta plug in all the pins and plugs into the ports on the receiver which, as we mentioned earlier, is also a transmitter, but we're gonna call it a receiver for all intents and purposes on this super hyper educational channel called Brian Phillips RC. If you didn't already know it was an educational channel, I'm sorry, you probably were at the principal's office and that's just the way it's gonna be. All right, guys, looking inside the hole, we have all these plugs. Where are these plugs supposed to go? These plugs are supposed to plug into our transmitter, or excuse me, receiver, okay? So the receiver has the rudder on channel one, two, three, four. So here's one, two, three, four, and it's got a minus plus S on the side here. Minus is brown, plus is orange, red is voltage or plus voltage, okay? So we're gonna go to pin four or set of pins four and put it in, okay? Then we have throttle. Throttle is gonna go to throttle. Throttle is channel one, correct? Mm-hmm. Okay, so we're just gonna stick that in the hole. In the hole. Now this is also gonna provide power from the BEC into the receiver. So that's an important connection there, guys. Now this is, uh, that's mode, we'll come back to that. Ailerons. Ailerons, where do Channel ailerons? Two. Channel two. Okay, so orange up. Channel two. So all you future pilots of America, this is the elevator plug. Elevator plug is on channel three. If you're mm -hmm. a future pilot of America, leave it in the comments down below and let us the truth of my statement. You're gonna be a pilot and you also fly radio controlled airplanes. Strange how that happens. Many, many pilots fly radio controlled airplanes, but many don't, I understand. But the level of interest in piloting has really dropped off as the FAA has made it more and more impossible for people to get in to flying. So we're trying to do our best here on Brian Phillips RC to educate people so they can do what they want to do and live their dreams. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So five is going to be gear six and then seven. Okay. So we have nothing going into channel eight. So we have a spare channel that's an active functional channel that we could use for something useful. Um, you can Y in this cable to anything. This is just lights. Okay. You just need to steal power from something. Okay. So since I happen to have an open channel, I'm gonna plug it in. Now you could also plug that into your bind plug and you're still gonna get power so long as this does not have a short from ground to signal, you'll be fine. But I'm just gonna use this channel. Hey, you know what, screw it, I'm gonna put it in. I don't need the bind plug. If you didn't have a bind button, you would need to plug in there. So I may not choose to do that. There's also some receivers that have additional auxiliary functions that go through their bind plug. So you have to, for instance, on the lemons, we used to plug in the landing gear on that. And every once in a while, you would get a heavy enough resistive load between ground and signal that it would actuate the bind sequence. So you'd have to unplug it every time you restarted the plane. Very annoying. So what you do in that case, you put the auxiliary function of some other auxiliary onto that and you put the gear onto the other channel and you flip your switches around. It's not a big deal. Okay, getting back to the point. We have the gear plugged into the gear over here. We also have the ailerons that need to plug it into the stabilizer. The stabilizer has a thing that says ale, and they're not talking about booze, okay? You see the ale? Nope, you don't no. see it. You gotta get right up in there. <clears throat> do you see it now? I do. You're gonna not be able to stand there probably while I'm doing this because I gotta have my right arm but in there. But they can at least, now they know. What now you know what I'm sticking my plug that. into. Okay, so now let's look at aileron. This is gonna be a tough one because I can tell that signal is toward me. So I'm just kind of grabbing this plug in a way that's going to get this plug accessible. So I'm grabbing the top half. I do not wanna grab the cables and chafe them or cut them. So I actually have this clamped now. Then I can put this straight into the hole. The hole. If you're just getting back from the principal's office and uh, you're wondering where your homework was from last night. We've been setting up the radio system and if you wanna help support our channel, you can buy these planes from the links in the video description below. You can also buy the receivers. We always link to the plane, receiver, battery, and transmitter. In this case, this transmitter. 
uh, is what we've been using lately. If we change it, we'll change the links to reflect those changes. And we love it if you would buy those planes from those links. But after all, our primary focus here is to help prevent one and dones, educate you as future pilots of America, both radio controlled and full scale. Korea. So anyway, in case some auditor calls and says, were you educated by Brian Phillips RC? Just remember, on the questionnaire, just mark yes. And if there's a rating system, just circle the 10. We only accept nines and tens here. I just made that up. That's what the doctor's office told me. Did they? I had to go be violated the other day for my other federal regulations I had to follow. Right after I got violated by another federal regulator. Seriously. You did have a lot. I am dead you serious. You were violated a lot last week. I had you? to take my clothes off for the federal government. Right? And I had to pay them. <laughs> it's just totally backward. Uh, anyway, gear is plugged to gear. You guys don't know the half of it. I wish I could go into more detail. It'd be super fun. Okay, so I need to maybe use an extension cord here because I cannot reach. Well, where are you going to put that? <sighs> well, In the plane. Oh. It's a receiver. Okay. We're going to pause for a second. Let's talk. No, keep going. I didn't oh, actually okay. pause. I, I meant like, we're going to pause and do <laughs> this. Okay. Yes. So we have an ex... We weren't going to do that. <laughs> Unless you wanted to. <laughs> we're just going to twist this cable, guys. It's an educational channel. We just educate people here. And seriously, all joking aside, guys, we educate people. We've been doing that for the whole time we've been around. And so if anybody says any different... If they come knocking at like past 9.30 at night, just don't answer the door. They mean you no good unless it comes in a pizza box. I suppose they could serve you in a pizza box, right? I don't think anybody comes out here for pizza. Do we get it ourselves? Did you actually learn anything on Brian Phillips RC? I learn stuff all the time. That's right. See? It's educational, strictly educational. How do you think I know all this We stuff? don't have any other motivations whatsoever. We've never wanted to sell an airplane or enjoy this at all. We hate it, in fact. We only educate. It is not fun at all, right? I liked my job. I still had fun. Teaching? Yeah, educating. You're a professional educator. I am. Except I'm good at the things that I educate people about. That's true. So you were the exception to the rule, mm -hmm. the one. <laughs> so you guys have seen what I've done here. I took it from this to that because I don't want this plane to look like our fatty. Yeah. <clears throat> that was some education. That was a little messy. <laughs> it's, just, it's, like, it's like the uh, walking dead flying around, <laughs> just pieces falling off randomly. Well, there goes the canopy. There goes the main landing gear. Who needs landing gear? Learn all sorts of things here on Brian Phillips RC. Right there, guys. Look at that. Look at that. And if you want to keep it so it doesn't undo, watch this. Oh, I let go. It only untwisted twice. How's that possible? Because when I was done, I pulled hard. And this is malleable and ducked out. Stam! Do you want to find those? Things? <laughs> malleable and ductile? No, that's what Google's for. Oh. Malleable means that you can malleable it. You can squish it. You can't use the word in the definition. Ductile it's means like... that it can be stretched into a wire. Really? Yes. Oh. Yes. See, I learned something. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> you need to hang out more with me. <laughs> no. I'm good. Remember, you remember this wonderful, this does all tool, you know, like Elton Braun. He, he hates tools that are single function uses. Yeah. And not only can you pick your teeth with this beauty. No, we're not gonna link to these, although we should. Oh, good. Toothpicks and Q-tips. That's Seriously. what we're gonna sell now. And journal cakes, obviously. So you can either break the seal here on this silicone cable, or because this is an EC5, okay? That wire would actually pop out from the front. And you see what happened there? Kind of like bleh. Yeah, right, because the solder soaks in, it actually wick, wicks in as it is melted and then sucked in here, okay? If this was me soldering, it'd be like wicked way back here because I would get it to like four trillion degrees and mm -hmm. I would let go and it would like melt through the entire aircraft. Mm -hmm. 
So that's why I didn't do that. Now, there is actually a tool you can get to remove these. And I don't have that tool because it's, it's just Elton Brown would not like that tool. It's a single use tool. So there's many, many ways you can do this. Okay, you see that little teeny bit of exposed wire? It's probably just a little bit too small. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get strippers out. I, calm down, jeez. Wrong type of strippers, obviously. Okay, here we go. We're just gonna strip those. Okay, see, we just stripped a little bit. And these are wire strippers. We're gonna put those red to red and black to black. So this connection is gonna be parallel into our receiver for telemetry. And you're like, but Brian, but Brian, you're not going to power the plane. Yeah, you're not gonna power the plane. This is telemetry. So if this catches on fire and burns, because there's like four trillion amps going through in it, you know, when you're going up four trillion miles an hour down the runway for a high speed pass for educational purposes, then you can, um, oh, oh yeah, I'm just trying to penetrate here. You're just here. gonna stick it in? Yeah. That's a little Ow. Oh. aggressive. It is, it is aggressive. But you know what, check this out. Okay, that's one way you can do it. I'm, I'm just showing you two different ways. So there's one way, but the easier way is to go, now why did I not go up here? because this is tinned, okay? So because it's tinned, if you were to go up here, you would pretty much be forcing yourself to solder it. Now, it's not a big deal. If you want to solder it, just go for it. But I like to go back here where I can poke and get into the braided part of the cable, okay? And then I can take this and I can go backward with it, okay? So I'm gonna stick it in a hole now that I've got that hole opened up. Sometimes you do have to work at it a little bit, but you see how I lift it up? And so I'm real shallow. But look, I mean, that looks painful, doesn't it? It does. Okay. So now I just peel this out of there and guess what? Those wires are still gonna be kind of out of the way. And see, I kind of bent that one, so it makes it a little harder. But you see, all I do is I just go in until it's uh, secured. And then the silicone layer receives the other half. And you're like, but Brian, that's so, excuse the lack of better expression, but half-assed, why don't you just solder it? because this is an educational channel. We're trying to show you how to do it. The easiest way, not everybody has access to a soldering iron, but to be honest, if you're doing this hobby, you need to get a soldering iron. But yes, it is half-assed, okay? But it works. Yeah, it does work. Okay, so now we're gonna drill this in. We're gonna lift it, get leverage, STEM! Sorry, I'm just using their talking points. Okay, now I'm gonna stick this into the new opening. Amazing. Okay, now watch this. Okay, I wanna to talk to you guys for a minute about this. What is the worst that could possibly happen by doing this in this manner instead of doing it with solder? What is the worst camera crew? The worst that could happen is the leads pull out and you don't have packed telemetry. And then you don't know the telemetry in your pack and then you fly until your battery's dead and then you crash into ball of flames. But you would also know that because you would know that you aren't getting the data. Where is yeah. my little black electrical tape? Did somebody take my electrical tape out of here? Um, no. Well, I guess we're gonna use this tape. Okay. Because I wanted to use electrical tape, but we're just gonna use this because it's in the drawer. Okay, guys. So the, you the are, you are correct. You're gonna lose telemetry. Generally speaking, the worst thing that can happen is that you would lose telemetry you would not be aware of it, but you would get an, you would get a code right away if you had an alarm set up. Right. Because you would lose your voltage. And guess what? That's all you really care about on this. This is not carrying enough power to fly the airplane. It's not energizing your circuit for any other extracurricular, like flaps or LEDs, any of that crap. This is just packed telemetry. You notice I did a little bit of a fold over there. Okay, and then I'm gonna tape over it. Just to keep it from getting yep. yanked. You don't hopefully. wanna, you don't want, well, I mean, yeah, you don't at want- At the wrong time. You don't wanna get yanked at the wrong time, okay? So when you're working to install your battery each time, this will be protected to a certain degree, and you can see that we now have a method to protect those wires so they stay in there. Now, this is just a really kind of simple, super easy way to do it. And then if you were to zip tie it, you could zip tie it back, but I, have a very strong, I have a positive experience from having done this many times. I've never had it fail, not yet. Mm -mm. 
And we have done it, yeah, well, I don't know, 15, 20 times, something like that. So I'm not saying it's impossible. You could make this fail, but we're actually quite careful with our cable management. And if you watch this channel a lot, and I'm not just talking about the educational stuff, we do a pretty good job of cable management usually. Not always. Sometimes like in that fatty over there. Mm -hmm. it sounds like we're just being really mean to that F-14. Really? It's actually a pretty fun airplane. It was good, it was pretty cool. Not as fun as this one. This Probably one's not. way easier to build. <laughs> yeah. I thought that'd be way easier, but it wasn't. Uh, okay, so now that's plugged in. And see, now that can just be kind of, pressure is now relieved, and that can just come back here with all the rest of your wires, okay? Mm -hmm. Look how nice and clean that is. And we have one wire that has to go into flaps, and that is short. I'm telling you, we're using an extension cord. I'm sorry, camera crew. You've been vetoed. It's rare, but it's happening right now. See, let me in there. Careful yeah. you don't hit this, by the way. No. This thing know, will like stab you. Aggressive. I mean, it just like, just hurts. <laughs> okay, so extension cords could be as simple as uh, any of these. Ooh, I have a perfect safe select extension cord. Look at that. That's a perfect one to take off. Do you need one for gear too, or did you have? Uh, you know, I don't know yet because oh, okay. there is that weird gear one that I honestly okay, don't so know I'm yet. I have to check because that's one thing that's got me confused because I thought the exact same thing. I said, did we plug in gear? No, we didn't. Mm -mm, we have not. So not we have to plug gear, gear in somewhere, but I'm honestly not sure. We did reach, here's the gear plug here, okay? So I don't know if that goes back to there because that says gear too, and I think this one might actually, you know what I bet it is? I think it's the steerable nose gear. And this is the retract. So this probably goes to the steerable nose gear up front, while the one from the wing has to do with the mains. So did they not provide an extension cord with a Y cable? Hmm. I don't know. That's a great question. So honestly, guys, I don't know that answer yet. That's a great point, because this is, says gear. And I believe what they mean by gear is they mean steerable nose gear. And there's several wires that come here. And look, here's one that plugs in. Oh, wait, 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 wait. That says rudder, okay? And that's the steerable nose gear right there. See, oh, wait, wait, that goes another direction. This one is the rudder. This one is the steerable nose gear. This one is the retract, okay? This one says gear. Does. And guess what? That's coming from, but where's the other one? Wait, there should be a second one. The one that wasn't here. Look, your that's coming wing. from up on the wing. Mm -hmm. See? And then this one comes up as well. I almost wonder if we need a Y cable. I feel like they might have wide the wrong cable because this one is flaps. We already know that. So why don't we get that plugged in? Okay. Sorry, folks. Sometimes you run into these weird circumstances and you know what? I just had a better idea. I just noticed, eh, that one had a retention clip on it, so I was excited about it, but I guess I'm not gonna be able to use it because it was actually a Y cable. Sorry, on. Okay, so I'm gonna grab this. Forceps, also known as hemostats. I believe hemostats would be more consistent with what's used in surgery. Yeah, that is not long enough, is it? Is that other one longer? Can I lay this out here for a sec? Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's longer. These are just some random cables that I have lying up here. I've got tons of cables down in the basement. But yeah, these, ooh, that one's way long. Oh, that's... Probably too long. Yeah. It's funny, there's certain lengths of these cables and you'll find this out if you get into the hobby for, for uh, any length of time you'll find the wrong length cable 10 times out of nine. But this still reaches, I can make this work. So this is flap. So flap goes to what channel? After channel five, so channel six. six. Okay, so then the gear have to plug in somewhere. I think we're just gonna have to run, this one's definitely gear and that one's definitely gear. Yep, and then this one's definitely gear. What the heck? Ooh, tough call. I think we're just gonna try plugging these back together and then, okay, so I got the brown going up and then I'm gonna plug in the only gear that I have access to, right? Mm -hmm. No, 
that's not the way it's gonna work. This plugs to the front one, that's the way it works. This plugs to the front one, then the other one goes into the receiver. That's totally the way it goes. And you guys will just have to guess and check until you get it because I can't indicate any better than that, I apologize. Even though this is a strictly 100% educational channel. You can use their problem solving skills. Yeah, that's your Practice. test. It's your, it's your, your test. That's, that's what teachers love to do. It's like, hey, we never talked about that. Let's have a test on that. It's called scaffolding. You Whoa, aileron. Why is that aileron not in there? It came out. The aileron got pulled when I did that. Dang it. It's called scaffolding. Yeah. You're talking about using one topic to teach them about another topic. You showed them how to do it. Now you have to walk away and let them try it on their own. Yeah, that's, that's the dumbest type of teaching I've ever heard in my life. Just tell me what the answer is and then I'll put it onto that little form that you hand out at the end of the class to see if I was taking a nap. That's the thing you don't teach our kids. Exactly. I don't need no stinking scaffold. I end, up falling, I end up falling off the scaffold and breaking my neck. Uh, yeah, okay, so we'll use this one. Oh, yeah. Okay. I thought it was female to female. I was like, that's not gonna work as good in this application. Hmm. This is kind of a target-rich environment. Start talking about connectors. My goodness. Hope we survive one video in this educational platform. We're gonna lose tenure over this. Oh, no. Whoa. All right, guys, it's all plugged in, but we're not done. Make no mistake, we're not done, okay? I could be wrong on, on retracts. I could be wrong on steerable nose gear. I think I'm correct, and we're about to find out, and that's what we're gonna do very next. Um, so I think the next thing I wanna do is just Make sure my nose gear is clear, it is. My mains are clear just in case they open, okay? And then what I wanna do next is I wanna use a battery that's gonna be of appropriate size that we can lay into the opening. And we're gonna talk for a minute about this. Shelf liner. It's one of my favorite topics on the channel, obviously. <laughs> Talk a lot about shelf liner here. Shelf liner is what you use to keep stuff from sliding around in your shelves. I'm gonna yank this Velcro right off of the board here. You have to kind of help it along because there's not much surface area for that to hang on to. Okay, so ordinarily they want you to do this to your battery and I'm like, eh, no thanks. So what I do instead is I take Velcro and I cut out shelf liner to stick and it works really sharp, and you end up with a very, very, very good hold on your battery, and then you can just take off the adhesive backing, and I'll show you exactly what I'm doing. Of course, I'm a cheapskate, so I have to save every last square cubic inch of it. Mm -hmm. Square cubic inch. Mm -hmm. Pretty sure that's not a thing. Nope. Shut up that back there in the back row. You can go to the principal's office bringing up my mistake like that. Okay, so there it is. So now watch this guys, slick, okay, watch. Slick, slick, slides, watch this. I'm gonna hold on to the Velcro. I can hold it at this extreme angle and it won't, it won't fall. Well, it just sticks. Okay, take my word for it. Now I can take that and slide it back under the Velcro straps or heavy duty Velcro straps. Guys, we love these FMS models. We hope you're buying them for yourself from the links in the video description below. You'll help support us with small financial contributions from the companies we work with so that we can put on this fully educational video for no other reasons whatsoever than to educate you guys, you future pilots of America. Okay, so we're gonna undo the straps now. These are heavy duty, strong, okay? Fura. Fria. Fria? Yes. Like Papa's Fritas? Is this like bilingual now? Yeah, well, it's educational. You gotta teach them how to speak all the languages too, obviously. Jeez, oh man, I thought you knew that already. 
So guys, I'm tripping over myself here. So we're gonna put our shelf liner away. If you are fortunate enough to be working in your uh, significant other's kitchen, <laughs> building your airplane, then count yourself a lucky person just like me because I have my wonderful camera crew and wife of many, many, many years. I won't say how many because it will age us both, but we're old. Yes. Make Very. no mistake, we are really getting old. If you're older than us, I apologize for that commentary. We mean no disrespect. But at the same time, we are getting old. And we love this hobby, and we're gonna do whatever it takes to meet whatever statutory minimums are required to keep flying and doing what we love because we're smart enough to adjust when stupidity kicks in. So, welcome to the educational channel. In case you haven't figured that out. Um, okay, so anyway, getting back to the education, we're gonna grab this strap here, we're gonna pull it up, and we're gonna slide the FMS strap through the other half of the strap, and we're just gonna do it like this. These make that really easy, but you don't need them. Also, you wanna take note of how deep the penetration is gonna be on this. It looks like we can put that either direction. Mm. Surprised they only say 4,000. That's a pretty stinking big pocket. I could mm -hmm. put a seven in there, 7,000. I'm sure we'll try. Mm. Nope. I don't know if I would say I'm sure, but now, grab the other one, pull it up, plop it through. I always prefer to kind of slide this little D-ring-ish thing back over here. Uh, yeah, I'm sure it has a name, but evidently I need to go get educated on what that is. Is there a name, camera crew? Ooh, okay. I don't know. So there's that. Sure there is. Some strippers looking over my shoulder. Get out of my Ooh. line of, yeah. Don't want them popping out of nowhere, scaring you. Okay, so I'm gonna make this level, okay? We got everything intact. We have our throttle cut, throttle cut on, and uh, throttle stick down. So now we should be able to energize the plane. You just need to remember, if this is a prop plane that you're copying along, just kind of doing the radio setup, just be careful, don't get cut. And if you got something stuck in the back of there, be careful. Okay, here goes nothing. <gasps> okay, so it's plugged in. Okay, so I need to bind this. So I'm gonna press this button, starts flashing, and then I'm gonna click and scroll down to bind. Bind. Okay, so it's bound. goes through a bit of a dance. All right, so now that everything is bound, we can start deciding where we wanna put this. But let's take a quick gander at this. I want you to come around here. Show them, first of all, the lights. Mm -hmm. Very good. Forward-facing white light, love it. Very and then cool. there is a red anti-crash beacon that's somewhere in the rear uh, behind the long removable shaft. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's look at telemetry, click. Scroll down to uh, telemetry. What up, config? Yes. So it's auto -ly configuring. So now I can go back to this. Ha, I see. 25 volts. And we also have the boop, 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 beep, 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 boop, 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 beep, beep, boop, boop, boop. But it's off right now. Thank God, because it would be obnoxious. <laughs> Unlike anybody in my life. Hey, you went away from oh, the, you were I was trying show to show them. Okay. Look, up, down, up, down. It shows a rate of change. That's called a vario. And you can make it beep with higher pitch frequencies and lower pitch frequencies. That's the way it sounds. Exactly like that. <laughs> Uh, you can also change your settings. There's uh, refresh rates and all sorts of stuff, but yeah, whatever. You're not gonna use it on this plane no. unless you're a weirdo like me. Mm -hmm. So, but you do also have the benefit of the altitude so you can know when you're flying at 399 illegal feet because you know our toys have become such an impact on the regular world that doesn't know anything about this that we have to be super careful that we don't fly within 600 feet of the nearest legally flying manned aircraft, which by the way, manned aircraft, you have a responsibility to yield to, but that does not necessarily mean that you can stop what they're doing. So you have to be really super careful. In my world, also, when I'm flying in PPG, I have a responsibility to also get out of the way of a 600 mile an hour 740 steering. 
hope that doesn't happen. <laughs> make a bad day. It's like, oh, I'm really, really, really trying to turn out of the way. Slow down. Hey, how you doing? And then the jet wash will... It's going to be fun. It's called weight turbulence, not jet wash. But that's okay. If you've watched Top Gun, you get it. You're certified. You can actually clip out of this test. I probably could. I was talking about the people that knew oh. what jet wash was, not you. Know what you. jet wash is? I watched. Top. Rop run with you. Rop run. 127 times. Hold on. I got to push my stuff back into the hole. You guys see what I'm doing with these diversity antennas? Yep. Antennas, not antennae. Antennae are on creatures, living things. That's what I was told. I hope that the person that told me that was right. Otherwise, I'm going to look like a fool. But that's one of the beautiful parts of being a YouTuber is that even if you're right, they still think you're a fool. But then again, I'm, I'm wrong a lot, so I kind of get it. I'm used to it. I don't like the way that's going, so I'm just gonna kind of like, I don't wanna break these diversity antennas and I don't want them to end up not being diverse. Because here in the educational environment, we are super diverse. We are so diverse that we're overly diverse to the point of being bad, diverse, 90 degrees off of one another. That's what that means. It's looking for a differential between the amplitude of the signal, and that's why you look for a 90 degree difference. In case you guys were wondering. So I'm gonna stick this right there, and I tape that on there permanently now. Can never be changed again until I move it. Sorry, I'm blocking your view, I know. But I wanna get that antenna back there. Get back there. You know why I care so much, guys? Why? It's because this antenna needs to get back where I'm not going to damage it, okay? That little portion that's clear, instead of being wrapped in plastic, the same dark blue or uh, dark gray plastic, that's the portion that's actively receiving the signal, and it's 28.8 millimeters long, I believe. I think that's right. And if you were to strip back that coax cable to 32 millimeters, it's screwed all up. You really? get echo. Yep. Oh. Yep. And it's factors of 28.8. .8. If you were to double it, then it would work okay. If you would have it, it would work okay. That's how they fine tune that. So weird. I know. A lot of this stuff is weird. Elevator. Elevator. Wow. Amazing. It's so pretty. Elevator up, elevator down, roll left, roll right. I'm gonna change the mode. Yeah, okay, so we are, okay. First thing I wanna do is I wanna change servo setup, travel, reverse, okay? So let's move the stick. Y'all left, y'all right. Roll left, roll right, that is incorrect. So we're gonna change ailerons. Roll left, roll right, elevator up, elevator down, that's correct. Let's open the gear. Oh yeah, that is beautiful. Okay, so now our y'all left, y'all right looks amazing. Let's close the gear. Oh yeah, amazing gear function. Okay, now I wanna switch gear. Then my gear will be up like this when I'm flying and it will go down when I'm ready to come in for final. Now let's check flaps. Oh yeah. Oh my goodness, wow. I think I might need a fresh pair here. Hold on, that is gorgeous. Okay, now check this out, guys, watch this. I got everything moving in the right direction, but watch this. See how that's moving? It's hardly moving, right? See how it moves more? Now it moves more? That's a telltale sign that you're out of auto leveling. Now, how do I know I'm out of auto leveling, okay? This would be auto leveling. There's another way to tell. First of all, put your gear up for ease. Put your flaps away, okay? And then you can take your plane and with auto leveling on, I'm gonna have mine switch the other direction. I wanna see if this tries to auto level the plane. So the first thing you do, look at the elevator. Is that trying to bring the nose up? Sure is. Is that trying to bring the nose down? Sure is. Now watch the ailerons. Oh my goodness, it's trying to auto level. Watch this. Now it's just, Stabilizing, rudder goes left, rudder goes right, elevator goes up, elevator goes down. And when I say up, down, I'm out relative to my eyes and my point of view, not yours, mine. 
Mm -hmm. Up, down, not the planes. What's happening relative to change? You want it to resist the change you're inputting. So if I lift this wing up, I want that aileron to go up. Watch, up, down, up. It's very subtle, you're not gonna see it. Up, down, I'm looking, I'm looking right here. Up, down. If you twist it, you can see it better. Twist and twist, twist and twist. I am seeing, it is correcting. Elevator, up and down. You can definitely see, but I'm standing here and I'm looking at it. You won't be able to see, let's try. You ready? No. Watch there, you see the corner? You're gonna look right here, okay? Now, you have to pivot the camera. You ready? On the count of three, one. Up, down, up, down. Do you see it? I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Okay, we're gonna try this again. Up, down, up. Here, how about this background? Up, down. Ah, oh, man, there's fatties getting in the way. <laughs> Take my word for it. When you're in person, you'll be able to see. Mm -hmm. Rudder's super easy to see. How about we do that? The rudder's the easiest to see, so we'll point that out. See the rudder? There, it's resisting, 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 okay? So what you're looking for is resisting whatever the impact is. Because remember, when I simulate a roll, that's what wind is doing, okay? Now, I don't want this to be the neutral regular mode. I want this to be. So all I'm gonna do is go to travel, reverse. I'm gonna just switch auxiliary two, okay? So now we have basically all the basic functions we need, except I wanna open up the flap deployment a little bit. So this is the next thing we wanna do. Let's take a gander from here. I don't feel like that's terrible, but watch this. Click, servo setup, travel. I've already got it pulled toward me, so deployed. That's 150, let's go to 145, okay? Okay, now let's go to this. See how it moves, the box moves. Now let's take this and see what happens when I move it. See how I moved it down? 145 to 145, so there's takeoff, there's landing. Now, what I'm gonna do, because this is a jet, I'm gonna go to flap system, now, why did I go 145 instead of 150? Because if you go fully to 150, sometimes the pulse width modulation spills over into the next range and it screws you up. Now, I could be wrong, but I've had that happen on Lemon RX receivers. Never had that happen on a Spectrum, never had that happen on an FMS model. But it's probably just good to not. It's kind of like when we used to it. use the UMX planes, how we add, uh, we, we never put them to 100% throw, we'd bring them back to like 95, so we would keep those linear long throw actuators. You know, it's the same, same theory. Plus that extra 5%, it's actually not 5% because it's 300 units of measure, so you've got the discrete movement is, is usually plus or minus 100, but you're going 50 more and 50 more, so it'd be, um, I'm sorry, did I say that right? It would be uh, 200, because it'd be 50 yeah. and 50 would be 100 plus, oh, yeah, right. so okay, that, yeah. no, that is 300. So it'd be 100 plus 50 is 150 and 150. So you're actually losing uh, 10 over 300. STEM, educational. If you guys don't think these videos are educational, you're not paying attention, okay? That would be a very small percentage, so you should be okay. It's like 3%, right? 3%. That should be right. That's why we don't usually do math on camera. 3.3%, 3.3333333 .3 repeating percent. STEM. Okay, all right, ready? So now this speaks to absolute value of the flap system. It only goes to minus 100, it only goes to 100 plus. Here, I need to come back where I'm in the shade, okay? So the sun is bearing down on us hard, okay? So you can't go any further. That's why we did servo setup to do that within travel, okay, on the flaps. Because you can't change any further in the flap setup, okay? Gosh, where's flap setup? There it is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave this position right, that's good, that's this neutral position here. Then I'm gonna take this, actually, you know what, maybe that isn't good. Cause look, a little high. Yeah, they're actually high, hold on. 
Because look, I'm looking, I was looking here, but I should have been looking On here. The inside. See that? Mm -hmm. The inboard portion of the wing. You know why that's that way? Because the wing sucked in further on the bottom. Oh. We're leaving it that way. Sorry guys, okay. I, it's, it's a judgment call and I could be wrong on that. Okay. So going back to the flap system. Now, for this position, takeoff flaps. See how I'm walking them up? I do this on my takeoff flaps anymore. This is something I didn't do as a younger pilot, okay? I didn't like the fact that it was only a little bit. Let's do 30, negative 30. Now, why do we want less on takeoff flaps, camera crew? I don't know, why do you? Because what happens is you're trying to strike a balance between creating extra drag and at the same time creating extra lift and also changing the angle of attack. So you actually force the plane to fly on its nose wheel on a tricycle. And I've seen it before. Case in point, A10 will take off and roll on the nose wheel. Case in point, uh, Twin Otter, it does the same thing, full, mm. full flap deployment, if you do landing flaps. If you do take off flaps, you want less deployment than half usually. Sometimes we call them a half flap setting and a full flap setting. The reason I do that is because you create less drag, which means it's a little easier for the plane to roll up the speed. Now, I'm probably splitting hairs here. You could do half flaps all day long and it would probably work okay. But because I have such an aggressive amount of flaps here and I want them for landing because I want to bring that thing in like this because that's the way we have to given the environment of the tree wrap nature of our flight environment here. The Freya. So if you're coming in a steep approach, you need more flaps or you need thrust reverse when you touch down, you're going to roll out. So because we land on aircraft carrier all the time, we have to make special accommodations for that. Now you might not have to, you may have a huge airfield with a 2000 foot runway or maybe even 3000 feet. Maybe it's 250 feet wide to where I could like all day long land laterally on the runway and you can't manage to get it on the main strip like other people we've run into before. Maybe if you're like that. Anyway, you won't have this problem, so don't worry about it. <coughs> Sorry, I had to clear my throat. This is educational. Stay on topic back there, you. So we have everything set up here, guys. We love this plane. It looks amazing. Obviously, you're getting a lot more bang for your buck than you might have expected. We tried to slow things down a little bit for you guys. We have some of you asking us to slow down on the radio setup. Our apologies if we still went too fast for you. If we did, we're giving you detention. And your detention is going to be served by going back and watching it again, except you're gonna click the gear and you're gonna to go to a different speed. Go to half speed. Go to 25% if you really want to hear me talk super slow. But I guarantee you, if you're missing it, Rewatch it a couple of times. It'll start to connect. Yes, I do get off on tangents talking about our competitors and how awesome they are and also talking about the federal government and just my pure love for them and the way that they keep me safe. Sometimes I get a little bit emotional and I just want to share all that emotion with you guys. But really what we want you to do is go out and buy this amazing plane in the video description below, there's a link. You just buy it there. You don't even need to go out. You can just do it right from your seat where you're comfortable. And also, when you're buying your receiver, do the same thing. It'll be great. And then you can be, it's be just like bringing the Apple in on the teacher's desk. You may hear us use a lot of this nomenclature like, you know, it's almost like we're trying to convince somebody that what we've been doing here for the last eight years was obviously educational. So. What we're asking you for a special favor today, it's not just buy the planes from the links below, which you've been doing, we really appreciate it, because it does help to fund our channel. Even though we're not here for funding, we never started this with the intent of funding, although funding does keep things running, and it is kind of, ne ne it's necessary. Unlike the federal government and their vast wisdom, we can't just reach into the printing press and make money out of thin air and then pass it along in the form of inflation on all of you guys. Nor can we just tax you for more money, nor can we make you go to work until you're 65 and dead or dying or on the way to dying. We just have to ask you to buy these beautiful planes and love them like your firstborn child, but slightly less because we love kids. We have four of them. Please help feed them, they're hungry.
But anyway, hopefully we've taught you something helpful in this video and we have shared our love for the federal government just enough to help you understand that we probably need you to put in the comments below just how educational this video was. And all seven of you that are still watching, you get gold stars for the day. That's right, that's right. Okay, so anyway, if you guys like this plane, and I'm sure you will, this thing is gonna be a joy to fly. I guarantee it's gonna fly a lot like the Futura. It's gonna be amazing. I can't wait to see it. I hope that these air holes are big enough because that's one thing I've noticed about this plane. The cheater is somewhat covered up by this long cylindrical shaft that's uh, right here, this mm -hmm. thing. And I'm a little bit concerned that the cheater is gonna be starved for air a little bit, but man, that thing is gorgeous. Also, I feel like the control surfaces on the V3 are super similar in size. I feel like the shape is super similar on these two planes, but I am a sucker for scale planes. But bigger than scale planes, I am a sucker for education. That's why I married a teacher, right? I wasn't even a teacher then. She's a good teacher. Hey. Can we hear it? Oh, you want to hear this thing? Okay. Ready? Oh, whoa. Oh, whoa! Whoa, that was like 60% throttle. Okay, hold on. We're going to go out here and see if it flies. You guys ready? It's purely educational, folks. Well, yeah. You guys ready? That thing blows. Awesome. I cannot wait to see it in the air. It is going to have near or better than unlimited vertical. I can already tell you that because the power to weight ratio is not one to one, it's slightly better. And that is amazing. If you can get an EDF jet that will stand on end like that, which I was just only holding it so it didn't fly up into my ceiling fan. Yeah. You know, and I'm actually fully legal to fly this thing in, inside all day, but it might be just a smidge too well, fast. Yeah, probably so. Um, but we did add the extra flap deployment. <laughs> so anyway, guys, amazing plane. Definitely check it out in the link below. Check out the NX-8. If you don't have an NX-8 and you're asking me about uh, like DX6Is, I had somebody ask me about that. And I hope if you were the one that left a comment, we, we aren't don't hear this wrong it's just you're an example we have had people asking us that for a couple of years now if you're looking at buying a used one that you can get for a steal you know that's fine but it is a stepping stone and i get that and i had stepping stone i had a used dx8 that was like my first nice radio and i thought i'm never going to use these channels ever 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 mm -hmm. ever 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 and then i got a dx18 and guess what i never used anything over 10 ever not even a one time. So, I mean, that's just my personal experience. There's a lot of guys, like we're to the point now in our RC career where I could start using more channels and I would know what I'm doing. And with forward programming, opposite reflex, you can actually take advantage of them very easily. It used to be a humongous pain, huge pain in the butt. Now it's pretty much seamless and it works perfectly and I'm super happy about that. But that being said, so much new technology, so much to learn, and all joking aside, guys, we really do try to educate you as part of our core mission statement here on this channel, which is to prevent one and dones, get you up to speed if you're coming back to the hobby, also to educate you on how to set up and get the most out of your RC dollars, because everybody has limits. Even us, we have limits. The people we work with, they have limits for us, and we try to get as much as we can out of all of it, so we can turn around and give it right back to you. And we hope that you guys see that and that it's so freaking obvious that even an appellate court would agree with a decision. <laughs> right? Is that what we should say? So anyway, um, if you're wondering about this, just ask in a totally private, non-public manner and I can give you more explanation. But at this point, we're just gonna keep living it up and loving what we do here on Brian Phillips RC, which is obviously for educational purposes. And then some of these other wonderful side effects come with it, which is totally true because many times in life, education is the key to success. 
But then in other parts of life, you just fake it until you make it. And it just depends. But the truth is, we're here to help you either fake it until you make it or fake it until you get it back because you already knew how to do it. Maybe you've got, you know, you riding like a bike, you know, coming back to the hobby, you can do it. Um, we're here to help you along the way. There's a lot you're not going to know. And there's a lot that you probably can connect the dots if you just have somebody that tells you what the acronym means. Because there's so many stupid acronyms. Like, why does everybody assume we all know these stupid acronyms? Well, you do because you watch Brian Phillips RC. And there's so much coming. I can't even begin to tell you because we can't tell you about the next one. So come back for more. Okay, guys, sorry. There's so much more. True, all those things are true. But we forgot to mark the center of gravity and test it quick. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. We're supposed to be 85 to 95 millimeters from the leading edge, which is here. It's on a flat plane, not measured with the circumference of the wing in mind, just a straight line, 85 to 95. So I'm gonna go to 85 on my calipers here. If you don't have calipers, just get a tape measure out, go to Google, and then figure out what 85 is in inches or whatever it is you've got access to. I am gonna ballpark this here, and yes, I'm gonna mark the top of the wing. I am sighting down the length of this seam, and I make it a little bump. I'm gonna come over here and do the same exact thing. I'm gonna go to this mark here, and I'm gonna slide back, and I'm gonna make sure I'm in alignment, go to approximately the same spot, and then make a little bump. Then I'm gonna expand this out to 95. That is a big range, by the way. Now, on EDF jets, err on the side of not super nose heavy because you will regret it. You won't be able to flare for landing, but you may not need to if you have the right plane and the right flap set up. Um, so also, by the way, I feel like my strake is bent here. You might wanna check your strake. Mine is bent, it looks like. I don't know why that is. Hmm. Trying to get this alignment just so. I must have gone out further on the other wing because I've got the bumps in a slightly different spot. That was a bummer. Okay, so now I'm gonna mark these with a black marker. And yes, I know some of you guys are cringing as you see me mark this. Like Brian, why do you mark them with a black marker? Here's why. Getting the center of gravity is important enough to me because it will mean the difference between success and failure, okay? And so in this case, what I'm doing is I'm gonna mark the center of gravity, then we're gonna test it with a 4,000, which we're gonna mark for the battery too. Um, when you're considering what you're marking and how you're marking it on your planes, I wanna warn you about one thing. Make sure that you test the CG and you mark where your battery is, but you need to test it that first time before you get too married to that position. You might find out that like the manufacturer is just not quite right. So this is a 4,000, 6S is what they recommend. You may actually find, like this thing fits great. There's tons of room in there. I feel like we could put a lot bigger battery. Test with gear down, because that's when you're gonna be the most critical on getting the CG right, okay? Some planes will specifically call out with gear up or gear down. Okay, that's the back set of holes, nose heavy. Front set of holes, mm, almost tail heavy. That means I probably want my battery back just a little bit. And that's gonna get my center of gravity back just a hair. I prefer to be a little bit closer to tail heavy than I am to nose heavy, but not tail heavy straight up. Okay, also I wanna point out the fact that our shelf liner is doing the trick. That battery didn't shift even a little bit. And you'll note that I even have Velcro on here. I could just use Velcro, but I like the shelf liner trick so much that I'm not gonna do that. Okay, so now I'm gonna push that down, pull it tight, hold it in, push that down, pull it tight, Hold it in. Now watch this, just so you guys can see how that shelf liner works. If your plane is stopping that fast, you're crashing. Okay, so we're gonna lay this down. I can definitely tell it's, it's balancing on the mains. You know what I've been noticing about FMS planes lately? What? Our batteries are like almost pretty much centered on the straps. I know. So you know who could take a note from that? Seems like a really stupid thing to note, but. Tail heavy now on the back, nose heavy on the front, okay? Or nose heavy on the back mark, tail heavy on the front mark, which means that somewhere between the two we're okay. And yes, camera crew brings up a very good point. If your batteries are lined up on the two straps, it makes it so much easier to load the battery. By the way, 
Loading a battery, we have said this and we'll preach it over and over again. Yep. Loading a battery, if it's difficult, will prevent you from using a said airplane. That's not true, Brian. I don't have 200 of them in the basement. That may be true and it is an impact. But I gotta tell you, I have planes and this is back when I didn't have 200 and some odd planes in the basement. And guess what? We didn't use them because mm. they were not fun and it was frustrating and I didn't wanna go out there and be frustrated and then I never seemed to you know, know if I could get the battery out when it was done and it puffed up just a little bit like the EDFs like to do. And uh, I'm gonna tell you right now, if you get a plane that's well designed, you're not gonna have problems with that, okay? So basically I have this marked as 4006S and I am gonna mark on here 50C and here's why, because this does call out, this does call out a 35 plus C pack. Of course, in this case, we're using a Gen 1. Do we use the Gen 1? Yeah, we use the Gen 1 6S 4000 milliamp hour smart pack. And what that does for us is it's going to exceed the required, um, you know, wattage basically. So we're gonna be able to pull enough power through the discharge lead that we can keep up with the demands of this EDF. That's a little weird. But otherwise, we didn't even talk about the trailing link landing gear either and that's the other thing. I'm sorry, I gotta to touch on this really quick because it looks amazing. That is a soft landing gear, I love it. That one's firmer and you do want the mains to be a little bit firmer because guess what? You come slam on the mains and then the nose gear is the thing that takes the brunt. However, totally not squishy tires. FMS, come on, man. Give us some squishy tires. We know you've got them. Just take them out of the truck and put them on the airplane because squishy tires on these airplanes would make them so buttery, smooth, and delicious. And I would love to experience them. But anyway, strictly educational here on Brian Phillips RC. I want you to leave it in the comments. This is a, a personal favor that we're asking. We want you guys to just leave a story and say, hey, listen, my name's Joe Blow from Kokomo. I've been watching Brian for seven years. Uh, I remember back when he was educating me then and he's still educating me now. Um, we love watching the videos because he educated me on this. And then tell us what we educated you on because we're curious if it's just all in our head because we think that it's like, who else is doing three hour videos of radio setup? I don't think anybody else is. It's just us. There are people that are doing other radio setup and, and they're doing a great job of it. Uh, but our own uh, special spin on it, you know, it's like everybody has their own flavor and there's nothing wrong with that. But just in case, you know, the FAA was watching and they were like, hey, is that an educational video? Sure is, FAA, sure is. So anyway, and we love sharing this hobby and how to do it with you here on Brian Phillips RC. We appreciate you. Don't forget to buy the stuff from the links, click the bell for notifications, and help keep me out of prison. Amen. I mean, come back for more.